In this video, let's take a look at dynamic attributes. In Svelte, it is possible to bind data to HTML attributes such as ID, class, style, image source, and even Boolean attributes such as disabled for an input element. The same curly braces we have learned about can be used for attribute binding as well. Let's take a look at an example. I'm going to add a constant. Const heading ID is equal to heading. Now we can bind this to an HTML elements ID property. So h2 tag, this is a heading and ID is going to be equal to curly braces and we specify heading ID. Let's save this and head to the browser. You can see the heading element is being displayed. If you inspect the element, you can see that the ID is in fact heading. If you are rendering a list of elements and you want each element to have a unique ID, dynamic attribute binding will help you. And what is cool about attribute binding is that you can use a shorthand if the attribute name and value are the same. So if we were to have a constant called just ID, instead of having ID is equal to ID, we can specify a shorthand of just the curly braces with ID inside. Svelte will infer you're trying to bind to the ID attribute. Take a look at the browser. You can see that the ID attribute is still present with the value of heading. Now attribute binding can also be used to bind Boolean attributes. The behavior though is slightly different. I'm going to define another constant, const disabled is equal to true. Now we can create a button and set the disabled attribute equal to the disabled constant. So button, the text is bind and we can set disabled is equal to disabled or use the shorthand and specify disabled within curly braces. Save the file, head to the browser and you can see the button is disabled. If you inspect the element, the disabled attribute is present. If I now change the disabled value to false, the button is no longer disabled. But if you inspect the element, you can see that there is no disabled attribute. So in the case of Boolean attributes, where their mere existence implies true, as in the case of the disabled attribute we have just seen, the HTML attribute will not even be included in the rendered button element if the disabled property is false. So these are the two examples of attribute binding. And when building applications, a more common need for attribute binding is binding to the class attribute on an element. It's pretty similar to what we've just seen, but there is an additional detail to class binding. Let's take a look at that next.